In this video, we'll take a look at techniques for solving logarithmic equations. And since my first video was fairly popular, I've done a second one here. That's why it's called part two. And we're going to take a look at four examples in this page and one in the next, uh, just how you solve logarithmic equations. Now, in the first one here, when you see just one single logarithm, so b is fairly similar and, and so is c, although there's a little bit of a twist because of the two here, then you basically, fairly early in solving this, you rewrite it in the equivalent exponential form. And so the exponential form here is 6 raised to the power of 3 is equal to whatever's in this, so the 2x minus 5. So that's how what I would write first. 2x minus 5 equals 6 cubed. Now 6 cubed is 216. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. And so we bring the 5 over or add 5 to both sides and we would get 2x equals 221 and then divide out the 2. And so uh, 221 divided by 2 is 110.5. So that is the solution for the first one. Now you can always check any logarithmic equation, in fact any equation, by substituting the what you think is the solution back into the equation to see if it makes the uh, two different sides have the same value. And so that would look something like this. We would put that 110.5 uh, in place of x here. And so when we put the... Uh, 110.5 in place of x, we would go 2 times the 110.5, so that would work out to 221 here. Minus the 5 is 216, so then we would have the uh, logarithm base 6 of 216 equals 3. And that is true because if you raise 6 to the power of 3, you do get 216. So that 110.5 did satisfy the equation. It has to be the right solution. So second one here, now if you don't see a base, the base is automatically 10. So it's like having a 10 here. If the base is 10, you don't normally write the 10 in. And so to rewrite this in its equivalent exponential form, 10 to the power of 2 would equal the 9x plus 1. And of course, 10 to the power of 2 is 100. That's 10 squared, 10 times 10. And so if we subtract 1 from both sides, we get 9x equals 99. And then divide out the 9, we would get 11. And of course, you can check uh, this as well. If we put 11 in here, 9 times 11 would be 99, plus 1 would be 100. So then what we would have would be the uh, logarithm of 100 equals 2. And that is true because if the base is 10 here, 10 raised to the power of 2 does equal 100. So that uh, 11 would be the correct solution. Now the next one here, when you have a constant in front of your logarithm multiplied by the log, then you take that 2 and, well one thing you can do is you raise the uh, this to the power of that uh, coefficient in front. And so this is actually uh, the, the power law. So the 2 comes up here as an exponent. You could also divide the 2 to both sides. That's another way to solve this. But I'm going to show how to using, because this is about logarithms, so I'm using this, uh, this power law here. So we bring the 2 up, and then we re rewrite it in an equivalent to exponential form. And the equivalent exponential form would be 4 raised to the power of 1 equals x minus 3 squared. And so, now we want to uh, solve for x here, so I want to get rid of this power of 2. And so, I would take the square root of both sides. And so if you take the square root of both sides, you get uh, x minus 3 equals, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now there's two solutions here, um, because this, there's two roots of 4, plus 2 and negative 2. And so solving for x now, we would take the 3 over to the uh, right side, or add 3 to both sides, and get 3 plus or minus 2. And so there's two solutions here, 3 plus 2 and 3 minus 2. Now 3 plus 2 is 5, and 3 minus 2 is 1. And of course, you check to make sure your solutions um, fit the equation. So for example, if I put the 5 in here, 5 minus 3 is 2. And so I would actually have this when I'm checking. It would actually look like this. We would have 2 log base 4 of 2 
equals 1. Now, this 2 comes up as a power just like when we solved here. So you'd have the logarithm base 4. Now 2 squared is 4. And that is a true statement because 4 raised to this power 1 equals that 4. So the 4 does work. Now there's a problem with the 1 though. When I put 1 in there, then I would actually get 2 log base 4 of, now 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And you can't actually take the log of a negative. So this is an example of an extraneous root. Now, the negative 2 can kind of work if you think of, well, if you bring the power of 2 up uh, and square negative 2, you do get positive 4. But this expression right here is not defined because you can't take the log of a negative. Like, for example, if you have the logarithm, let's call the base a for a moment, and let's let's leave that negative 2 there. And let's say there's some positive number b over here. If a and b are positive numbers, then if you raise a to the power of b, it has to be positive. It cannot equal a negative number. That's why you can't take the log of a negative. Because uh, if you have a positive base raised to a, a positive exponent, it has to be a positive power. It can't equal a negative. And so that's why we would uh, cross out the 1. The only solution here is the 5. Now, on to D. When you see the sum of two logarithms, and this is another property of logarithms, you can rewrite that as one single logarithm by multiplying the x minus 2 and the x plus 5. So that's one of the, it's called the product law. Be careful not to call it the product rule because in calculus that's uh, a, a name for a specific differentiation rule. So it's the product law. So we multiply x minus 2 and x plus 5. So it's a log so that's equivalent to logarithm base 8 of x minus 2 times x plus 5. So we multiply those two binomials together. x times x is x squared. This product would be negative 2x and this product would be 5x and that those two add to 3x and negative 2 and 5 multiply to negative 10. And so now this is pretty similar to uh, A or B or not really C so much because there's no number in front. So we rewrite this as a uh, in its equivalent exponential form. So 8 raised to the power of 1 would equal the uh, trinomial here. And of course, of course uh, 8 raised to the power of 1 is just 8. So I'm trying to solve for x here. So this is actually a quadratic equation. So we could use the quadratic formula or factor. So, But the first thing you do in either case is you have to put everything on one side set equal to 0. So I'll subtract 8 from both sides or bring the 8 over. Negative 10 minus 8, of course, is negative 18. So that's the quadratic equation we're going to factor. Now it does factor because there are two numbers that add to 3 and multiply to negative 18. And that would be positive 6 and negative 3. So those are the factors of that trinomial. So if we set each of those to 0, if we set x plus 6 to 0, we get negative 6 for a root. And if we set x minus 3 to 0, we get uh, positive 3 for a root. Now, the negative is an issue, uh, just like the 1 was here. Because if we put negative 6 in here, or negative 6 in here, either of those binomials is a negative value. So you can't evaluate those logarithms. So we'll uh, get rid of the negative 6. Uh, 3 does give a positive number here and here, so let's check and see if 3 actually works or not. So putting uh, 3 in here and here. So 3 minus 2 is 1 and 3 plus 5 is 8. Now, so we have the logarithm of 1 base 8, so the answer to that is what power do you raise 8 to to get 1? And of course that's 0. 8 raised to the power of 0 is 1, so this would have a value of 0. Uh, the logarithm of 8 base 8 is equal to 1 because it you raise 8 to the power of 1 to give you this 8, just like you raise 8 to the power of 0 to give you this 1. So this has a value of 0, this has a, a value of 1, and of course 0 and 1 add to 1. And that is what is on the right side, so the left and right sides are, are equal. Um, the 3 does make uh, the left side value and the right side work out to the same thing, so 3 is a solution here. Okay, one more example on the uh, next page. 
And so in this case, we have logarithms on either side. Now, if this 2 wasn't here, I could just say 2x plus 5 equals x minus 8, and I could solve for x. But there is a 2 here. So what we want to do is either combine this together or bring the two logarithms over to the same side. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this, uh, this logarithm over to the left. The, uh, what will change is, of course, that logarithm will be minus the log base 3 of x minus 8 equals. Now, the 2 I'm going to leave on the right side. Now, notice in all these examples, the base of the logarithms are always the same. If they're not, then you can't use these power uh, properties of logarithms to solve this. So you would generally find them to be the same. If they're not, then you, you wouldn't be able to solve that by these methods. And so if we have a difference of two logarithms, then you write that as one single logarithm. This is the quotient law. Again, don't call it the quotient rule because that's a differentiation rule in calculus. Uh, we write as one logarithm as it's the logarithm of the quotient of 2x plus 5 and x minus 8. And of course, that was still equal to. Now, this is very similar to the examples from A and B in the last page. Uh, we would now, since we have just one single logarithm here, rewrite this in an exponential form. So 3 to the power of 2 would equal the 2x plus 5 over x minus 8. And of course, uh, 3 to the power of 2, 3 squared is 9. And now we want to solve for x here. This is a rational expression, so what I would do is multiply both sides by x minus 8 so that that will divide out. And so then we would have just 2x plus 5 on the left uh, would equal 9 times this. Now 9 times x is 9x, 9 times negative 8 is negative 72. Now I want to rearrange and solve for x. So let's bring all the x's to the left, the constants to the right. 9x here is the same as subtracting 9x on the left. Uh, if we take 5 away from both sides, we get uh, uh, negative 72 minus 5 on the right. So that's negative 7x, that's negative 77. If we divide out the negative 7, we get 11. And that's actually the, the second time we got 11 for solutions. The solutions aren't always 11s, but uh, just happens that way here. So let's check and see if 11 works in, uh, and go back to the original equation. Don't check in here or here. Check in the original because, for example, if I made a mistake from here to here, but everything else was done properly, and I checked in this step here, then it would look right, even though my answer would pop probably be wrong. So go back to the original equation. So the left side is the, uh, the log base 3 of 2x plus 5. So we're going to put that 11 right in there. And so 2 times 11, of course, is 22, plus 5 is 27. And uh, one way to evaluate this is to use uh, the, the power law and says that if you rewrite this as uh, um, a power, 27 is 3 cubed, and I want to write as a power of the same base as this base of the logarithm. So <clears throat> if this is the same, the base of the power and the base of the log are the same, this equals the exponent. So that's one way to find that out. Another way this is to say without doing this is 3 raised to the power of 3 is equal to 27, so that's why it equals 3. Now let's evaluate the right side as well. The right side is this expression here. And so once again, we'll put the 11 in place of x. 11 minus 8 is uh, 3. And so the answer to this logarithm is value. 3 raised to the power of what gives you 3? Well, it would be 1. So that's 1. And so 2 and 1 add to 3. So once again, we get 3. So the left and right sides work out to be the same thing by putting 11 in place of x. So that guarantees us that 11 is the correct solution. And that's the end of the video.